So this is Olive's little duckling, Lise. Uh, Lise is imprinted on Olive, so she actually thinks that Olive is her mother. So she'll follow Olive around and call for her when she's alone, and um, really loves Olive just like, just like she would her mother. Ducks and a lot of other birds will actually imprint on the, the creature that raises them. So they'll think that they are, whatever raises them is their mother. And with ducks, because ducks leave the nest so early, they, um, they do that very quickly. So whereas another bird, it might take a while for them to imprint on their parent, because they've got lots of time, they're just sitting in a nest. With a little duckling, they leave the nest just hours to a day or so after uh, hatching. So they need to immediately recognize their mother and bond to them. So it happens much more quickly with things like ducks and pheasants and quail than say like a starling or a crow or a parrot who stays in the nest for several weeks before they, they leave and fly around. So Lise will follow her anywhere she goes. And um, as you see here, even when she's swimming, she's got this whole pond she could swim in but she prefers to be right next to Olive, just like a baby duckling would want to stay right next to their mother when out in a big lake or pond. Now, Lise is a domestic duck. She's a breed bred specifically for laying eggs. She's what's called a Welsh Harlequin. And the Welsh Harlequin breed is a break off of uh, a Khaki's Campbell breed of ducks. And both breeds are, as you would probably guess, bred specifically for producing eggs, large amounts of eggs. So uh, normally, a duck would lay eggs for a couple months out of the year and then stop. So only during the breeding season, pretty much. Um, humans have artificially selected birds like ducks and chickens and quail, certain domestic species of quail, to produce eggs year round or almost year round. And some breeds are better at it than others. The khaki Campbells and the Welsh Harlequins are some of the best egg layers in the world. And they actually, a lot of times, will outproduce some of the best egg laying chickens. They're so specialized in their breeding. This specific breed, not only in addition to being more uh, prone to laying lots and lots of eggs, they also are very tame and friendly. Whereas the Khaki Campbell tends to be more nervous. Uh, these guys are a lot more friendly naturally. And so that was part of why we selected this breed for Olive. We could get lots of eggs, as well as having a nice little pet at the same time. So this is my little duckling, Ping. Ping is her mother, or his, we, we don't know if it's a he or she. Um, Olives, we're pretty sure is a she based off of her coloration. Um, but this little duck, we don't know what it is. We know the mother is a Welsh Harlequin because it's pretty easy to determine, you know, who the mother is, whoever lays the egg. And uh, when we went and bought Olive's little duck, you know, we did a lot of homework and research and picked a very specific breed. And we drove to a breeder's house and picked out little Lise to be our little egg duck. Just like Lammy mows our lawn and produces milk for us. The plan was that Olive's little pet, Lise, would produce eggs for us. And um, while we were there, we saw this little duckling. And as you notice, this little duck is a totally different color from Lise. The thing with Welsh Harlequins is they are all the same color. Whether they be adults or whether they're little, you know, newly hatched chicks, they are all pretty much the same color. So, when this little guy came out, totally different color, they could say very, very, very confidently that the father was not a Welsh Harlequin like was planned. This little one clearly has a Welsh Harlequin mother because they know where the egg came from but the father was something else. 
Now, based off of the coloration and the fact that they don't know what the father is, their guess is, uh, really the only thing that makes sense, is that Ping's father was a wild duck. And he uh, must have came in and, and bred one of the Welsh Harlequin females, creating this hybrid uh, little offspring. Half Welsh Harlequin, half what is presumed to be a wild mallard duck. Now, all domestic ducks come from the same species. They're all mallards that were domesticated hundreds or thousands of years ago. So they can freely interbreed and, and have offspring totally naturally, it's, it's just normal. So I asked the breeder, what are you gonna do with that little mixed bred duck? Cause you know, we asked her what it was first off. We're like, why is that one a different color? And she said, we don't know who the father is cause it's clearly not a Welsh Harlequin. I said, well, what are you gonna do with it? It's, I mean, do you have any plans with it? She's like, we don't know what we're gonna do with it. Nobody really wants a mixed bred Welsh Harlequin and we don't really want it. And I said, well, how much do you want for it? And she's like, we'll give it to you. And so we got this little duck and I decided to name him Ping. Ping comes from a little kid's storybook. I read that book as a little kid and I loved that book. That was my favorite book when I was just a little, little boy. Anyway, so I finally decided that's what I'm gonna name this little, little ducky is Ping. And um, I put the time into this duckling just like all have put the time into Lise and bonded and imprinted uh, Lise to her I did the same with little Ping. So Ping thinks I'm her mother or his mother. We don't, we don't know the gender yet. And little Lise thinks that Olive is her mother. And so just like Lise follows Olive around, Ping follows me. Maggie's got this beautiful little aquarium here with all the green plants and all these little feeder fish. These are called guppies. We use these for feeding all of snake, but as you can see, we have way more guppies than we really need to feed the snake. The snake doesn't eat just guppies, it also eats uh, night crawlers and, uh, and baby rats, little pinky rats and things like that. So it doesn't need all of these little fish this time of year, especially we have so many other food items, options. So, and the plants are growing pretty good as you can see. See those little snails growing on that feeder? and one growing on the, or climbing on the glass. There you go, there's another one growing on the on the glass, or not growing, but climbing on the glass. So there's lots of little snails. Those little snails tend to overpopulate more than we really need to clean algae and they eat on the plants. So we've created a little soup for the duckies. And you see there's a few little fish in there, you can see, not too many, just a couple. And we, we take some of the extra plants and then we also harvest a bunch of the little snails. Yeah, you can kind of see that there's a little snail in there. See right there? And this is, we found, not only highly, highly nutritious and natural diet for the little duckies, it's also a ton of stimulation. So the duckies, even though we may be busy and they're just sitting in their, their little, little brooder, they can have a ton of stimulation and forage just like they would in nature. Forage for their own food in their water dish eating the plants, eating the snails, eating the little fish, and they absolutely love it. It is great, great enrichment and a huge boost in their diet, giving them a more nutritious diet than they would otherwise just having little pellets. And we have the pellets over here. The ducks absolutely love this. Right now he's just drinking, but like he's gonna start foraging here. Let's see, maybe I should go above. Yeah, let's do it above. You can see he's foraging and getting a little drink and then eating some plants, feeling around. Oh, got a little snail there. Crunch, 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 eat the little snail. So one important thing to notice about Ping's enclosure is the location. It's see-through and it's located right in the middle of the house where we come walking through. There's, a, It's in the kitchen, the living room, and the Dining room are all right here, so most people are gonna be near this location. And that's important because Ping is being um, imprinted on humans, doesn't have duck companionship, and ducks are very, very social creatures. So Ping needs to see people most of the day. Um, also another important feature is the, the heat source. This is a non-light uh, emitting heat source. So it keeps Ping at the appropriate temperature, which at Ping's age, that's 80 degrees, 
but when you first hatched that was 90 degrees. Anyway, it keeps it at the appropriate temperature without adding additional light. So when we go to sleep at night, Ping's not stressed out feeling alone. It's dark. Ping can't see that we're not around and so it just goes to sleep. Another part of Ping and um, Olive's Ducky Lease's diet are these insects. These are the little, the little brown things are dubias or sometimes called dubia roaches. I still have a colony from back when I had raptor. And then the long things are called mealworms. And uh, the mealworms and the dubias add an important part of Ping's diet. In addition to all the greens and the vegetables and the pellets, um, these are mostly a treat. Um, Ping gets lots of them, but only time Ping gets these little treats is when uh, Ping comes when I call. Um, so I use them basically as a reward for coming when I call. So when I come out in the morning to do chores, I bring little Ping with me. And because Ping is imprinted, um, Ping considers me the mother and follows me wherever I go. But this is good for Ping to get out, get some exercise and some socialization, just like a wild duck would be following their mother throughout the day. Little Ping needs to get out and follow me. So I'm just gonna do some chores here. And little Ping is gonna follow me around, huh Ping? Uh, the hope is Ping's a female and will produce some eggs, obviously being half wild as we assume. She's probably not going to produce a, a ton of eggs, but um, yeah, either way, even if it's a male, it'll be a fun little pet for us to have, and we're just enjoying our time with fun little our fun little pets. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll show you more next time. Hi, YouTube. Bye, YouTube.